Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Natty 19 Podcast. I'm Jonathan Marshall, and we are back again. You're welcome. Episode 57. Oh, my goodness. It hurts to think about. It hurts to even think about that we've been doing this for this long. All right. Where were we? We're going to... Do we have any announcements? Good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i think we leave us a message people give us a written review on itunes oh, sound we want to sound so desperate <laughs> yeah, no. we do no 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 we demanding. Do. she's yeah. kind of demanding yeah, we are it's demanding, demanding. Yeah, very demanding yeah. you can Nobody call me mandy us no. give us one <laughs> we ap- do it we appreciate all of our true fans you know the ones that drop us a like <laughs> yeah uh i don't Really have guys anything are embarrassing to announce? You what you know <laughs> what? Yeah, we don't have to. We don't have to do these every every episode. We don't have no. to do them every episode because I want to give you a new to Swainy if you do it. Oh, uh, we have one. You of still those? have those? Do we? Have? I do. Oh, hopefully you used to get one. naked all the time. Oh, that's true. I you do did. have one of those. Remember that time I got naked at your house? Remember the Did butt I jump off the, your I porch say, in the snow? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the butt cheeks over the say. fence. Like I <laughs> saw you naked before I knew you as a person. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Wait, was that part of a game to jump naked in the snow? Morton's list. Morton's oh. list. Yeah. Oh, we could go on all oh. night about Morton's list. Morton's <laughs> list. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Almost as good as this. Almost as good as this. I want to get into this. I love what's going on right now. I've been thinking about it. The heat of combat. And I want to get into... We got Zayrol taking some damage. Cue the music. Let's do it. Natty 19. This is like their longest cliffhanger ever. How much damage did I take? (laughs) Yeah, so so we were fighting a tabaxi. And, uh, oh, I have, all right, yeah. So there's a couple things, right? So we talked to the Red Wizards. Uh, They took, I might have drank a little bit. (laughs) They took Wesson Wesson away. The Red Wizards took Wesson. (laughs) I was going to say another W. Red Wizards took Wesson. (laughs) And we're doing we, a recap, and then we made our way across the, uh, and then we made our way across the log bridge, and we got pelted on by arrows with this tabaxi, a crazed hunter, crazed hunter, and Zavril ended up getting struck by a poison arrow. Yes. Oh, and I have no, a confession no, no, to no, make. No. Two short, short swords. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we were halfway right across up. that log, and we were pinching it off, and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do have a confession to make. Um, I had cast Identify, on, and I didn't have the first level spell slots to do it. I would have had to do it as a ritual. However, to penalize myself... Penalize. I did, penalize. <laughs> for fucking <laughs> sake. Penalize. I hate when don't people say, say penal. penalize. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't say penal. You, you know I we'll can't keep to it together. <laughs> <laughs> It's so in, in order to in order to make up for my mistake, I uh, deducted my two third level spell slots, which I still had it available. Is that acceptable? Oh, you can cast GM. I, I think thought one you one would have been fine. Cast as a ritual. I thought you could cast. Uh, you can cast it as a ritual, but it would have taken would have taken a, an hour. Yeah, yeah. I uh, thought you could. Minutes, I, I thought, thought you can't. I you, thought it was well. I thought you mm. could expand a higher slot for a lower level spell. You can. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. So regardless, I'm sure like, you, can. you can. So I so would say just, just one, one of them, not both. Yeah. You can definitely expend a higher level slot for a lower one. Okay. All right. Now, once again, and this is probably going to happen a lot going forward, I'm going to have to forfeit my dice thuds. I'm sorry, Mike, uh, but there's a lot going on right here with this poison damage. Talking to Wooski? Yeah, Wooski. Mike Wazowski. 
Does like those dice thuds. He loves them. No, that wasn't Mike. Oh, it wasn't Mike? Uh, no, that was Dan. No. Oh. Sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, it was just a lot of dice going on, and I want to get to it. So here we go. Dan, he loves those dice thuds. He does, and They're I'm sorry. Nice. We, call him, uh, we call him Dice Thud Dan. We do. Is that so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to put it, this roll of poison damage. It's coming to Zavril in the dice tower. Are you ready, Mr. Dawn Tracker? I'm we worried. really should get some dice boxes. <laughs> now, Zavril, forgive me. You took how much piercing damage from that, from the initial attack? Uh, it was nine. Nine piercing damage and an additional 30 poison damage. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. All right, no let's thing. go back to this whole... Um, Cliffhanger. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this damage yet. That would knock Quincy out. Yeah, Irme would be done. I am gonna. You're gonna hear me scream in pain as the poison tears its way through Zavril's veins. You hear him cry out in agony. Next up, because he missed with that second attack. Now imagine if he hit. With that second. <laughs> All right. Uh, and he's going to stay. He firm-footed, fighting with you. Zavril, round three. <laughs> Seven hit points left. Well, what did he hit Zavril with? What kind of weapon? Short sword. Short sword. Two sh- he threw his bow down on the street right. below. Right, clank, clank. Drew his two short swords, and in a flurry of blows, swung at him. Hit with the first one, missed with the second one. Both and are poisoned? 39 damage with and one hit. 39 damage with one hit. The real king of... Feathers. <laughs> the king of furs. You see now he's got a feather sticking out from his shoulder. It's not all too different from the ones that the king of feathers donned. <laughs> he actually killed the king of feathers and brought Must him have. back. <laughs> <laughs> Raised him as his lap dog. This guy is serious. His field man. Is Chuck, Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris. I like Tabaxi. They're cool. I, I they actually know. crept up while the King of Feathers was sleeping. And you played a Tabaxi in episode nineteen. I know, 20. and it's true. Weirdly enough, to bring it full circle, Six Feather was her name. Oh. And this guy is nine feathers. Bag, uh, bag of nails. <laughs> nine nails. We'll call him bag of nails. Bag we don't know how many nails were in the bag. For some reason, I was seeing the number nine, but. Yeah, you were six feathers because when you first said Tabaxi, I was hoping it was going to be. I was hoping it was going to be six feather too, but she went into that that fucking tomb and he was like, there's no way you'll think it out. She's dead. All right. So. (laughs) She's in the tomb. (laughs) There's no. That's a story for. That's a story for another time. That's a off night. We're gonna we're gonna continue that tale. That is a story for another time. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> that was going in. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in there. I Zabel's kind of in shock right now. Like I was not expecting that at all. Zabel, you're down to seven hit points, and you are up in this thing's grill. Uh, what's going on? What's going to happen here? You know, I am glad I picked up this feat a few levels ago. I am going to use my martial adept feat and do a disarming attack. Wow. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Let's see it. Uh, we are rooting for you, Mr. Don Tracker. So the question that comes into play is this. When I... All right, let me go ahead and read it, and then you can answer my question. When I hit a creature with a weapon attack, um, I can expend one superiority die to attempt to disarm the target, forcing it to drop one item of my choice that it's holding. Now, yep. now when I do this, do I have to call it on one whip, or is it after I already hit? Ooh. I would say unless specified, you can call it after you hit, Because right? it, it oh, says I mean, when you hit a creature, I can sp- uh, expend the superiority die. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's yeah. when you hit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Follow the path. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. On a failed save, it drops the object and lands at its feet. So let me go ahead and roll to hit. Yeah. This thing is breathing So you're, you. you're rolling to disarm. He's rolling to hit if he hits. Yeah. Then it has to pass a save or be disarmed. 
Yep. This attack he's making, he's like trying to whip the weapon oh, yeah, on yeah. the weapon. Uh, the first whip is armor class 17. Uh, that's a hit right there. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Defang the serpent. So you, so what, what save am I making? The target must make a strength saving throw. Okay. DC 14. Oh, he might fail this, guys. He fails. Uh-huh. Which which weapon are you disarming? I guess it doesn't matter. Whichever one hit me. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Yeah, zero. You lash out with your whip. Boom. Hit that. You Indiana Jones is around the hilt. You fling it up, ripping the short sword from its hand. It flies off, landing down in the streets below. He hisses at you in anger and rage. All right, so I'm going to roll damage, and then I'm going to continue the uh, assault. Okay. Six slashing damage. Six slashing damage. That brings him to a total of 40 wounds, which now puts him at the bloodied condition. And immediately after you slash him, with after you after you lash at him with that second attack, was that the second attack or first? Oh, attack? that was the first one. Sick. First one. At, immediately at that point, he drops to one knee and he lowers his head and he says, "I yield, Hunter." What? What? <laughs> Whoa! Curveball. Kill me if you must, but I will not fight any longer. He's holding his side where he's bleeding. I am not going to follow up with my next attack. I never even rolled the attack roll, so... Zavril stops dead in his tracks before lashing at him again. Who goes right after Zavril? Quincy would go after Zavril. Could I hold him as a reaction in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> now, as don't far as I'm concerned... Him. You don't need to comfort him or anything. Do I see? Am I able to see Mr. Don Tracker hesitate and sort of like stop? Lay off his attack. Yeah, you see, yeah. you see this. He kneels down, and Zavril holds his his next attack. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no uh, combatants left in the initiative order, so initiative is over, and you're free to act as you will. Well, Copernicus was mid scramble up there. Well, yeah, Quincy will just shout. We do not wish to do you harm. We were merely defending ourselves. He's choking out blood at this point after taking so much damage from you, from you guys. And he says, You are worthy opponents. Um, as I get closer, is the gray just the color? Or is it like old gray? It's fading, yeah. It's... Main, oh, almost not mangy, but it's definitely unkempt. So he's old tabaxi. Can I? Um, he's definitely old, and and you guys know that as tabaxis are getting older, they start to lose their mind. They want to die a hero's death, so that it kind of consumes them. Um, and that's just the nature of it. It it almost saddens you a bit to see him in this <laughs> condition. His eyes are kind of milky with age. It definitely saddens me. I mean, it would if I could, but I don't. <laughs> but as so an, another hunter, <laughs> <laughs> as another hunter, I imagine Zavril would feel saddened by it. Um, can I? I'm just gonna. Can I hold a spell? Well, in case a- he- anyone would. Any mortal. Anyone with the heart. Anyone with an idea that they will too someday get old and and feeble, <laughs> 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 or at least you know feeble-minded. Um, and just it's a scary it's a it's a there's a certain fear i guess in there uh of just becoming that someday yeah so you know what irme is going to um kind of feel that um change in her that's happened throughout time where she's been a little less merciful and a little less trusting I and mean, she was originally going to hold the spell and be ready to cast it upon him doing anything that seemed aggressive but instead, she's going to opt to just watch him to see what happens next. Yeah, after his kneel, uh, he sheaths his short sword, the one that he has left. His bow and his other short sword are down on the street below. And he's still on one knee. 
Um, I imagine if uh, Quincy catches up, I, 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 we have like moments are happening. Quincy catches up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says, "You too, my friend, were a formidable opponent." He says, "You should have seen me in my younger years." I would fear such a sight. Mm, I'm glad we didn't. They call me Bag of Nails. It is not my chosen name, but I wore it with honor. And I am sure there is a story behind that name. So you will let me live then? If you will let us pass unharmed? Of course. You beat me. You may do as you will. And if we should pass this bridge again, would we leave unmolested? I will do more than that if you'll have my offer. Copernicus will whisper to our ear, man. More like bag of fails. <laughs> Don't be a dick, Copernicus. I have a domicile not too far from here, just around the corner. If you don't mind the company of an old passing tabaxi, I could welcome you as guests for a short time, and perhaps I can tell you my tale. Irime is going to look to Riga. He's listening intently. He doesn't look like he recognizes this as one of the tabaxi that he had followed in. I do believe we could use the rest, friend. Yes. Excellent. I have not had company in a very long time. Does anyone know the time we have before we must reach the others? We didn't have the a red time. Wizards. He says, I do have food and drink. I, we didn't. Okay. If you are hungry. Ah, oh, famished. Quite so. It's excellent. I will lead you there then. It is just around this corner. I apologize for the misunderstanding. The years are becoming more difficult for me. Irme is going to look to Quincy and say, and with the rest, we might have the ability to help you, looking for permission to offer Quincy's services. I could offer a little assistance now, although it does appear Mr. Don Tracker is perhaps more wounded. I'm going to heal myself up. <laughs> okay. Now look, I originally didn't want to hurt this thing. But now... Until I saw what it did to Zavril with one hit. So let's be a little bit careful here before we go back to its home. Copernicus is very untrustworthy of this. I do appreciate your caution. He says, I understand your caution. From what I know of the tabaxi as an anthropologist, they are honorable creatures. All right, Irime. So Quincy will use his last spell slot, level two cure wounds, to uh, help the tabaxi along. He recovers right. 14 hit points. All right, that puts him at 26 wounds. Thank you, friend. It then he hits me with a <laughs> yeah, short right. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I have found the strength. <laughs> I am beginning to feel much better. I do appreciate your calming touch. Is this while you are walking or? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you climb down. He's able to climb down now uh, efficiently after being healed. Um, and he, he was correct. Not, it wasn't too far away, uh, maybe about 30 feet from where you guys ended that fight. There's this old tattered curtain hanging from what appeared to be on the side of a building. Uh, but when he moved it, it there was like a, a, a crack in the, in the crumbling wall. Uh, and he passes through. There's barely enough room for you to squeeze through. And when you get in, you see this cluttered little dome-like area that he had set up, just collecting random tidbits uh, of trophies in the area. You see skulls of all various types of creatures. You see various rusted weapons and or, or rotted wood uh, hafted weapons hanging on this wall. I mean, the whole area is probably about 15 feet by 30 feet. Are these your trophies? It says, these are trophies that I had collected over the years. Very impressive. So then you've been in Omu for quite some time. Not entirely. I traveled here uh, probably about a year ago now. Uh, and you see him, when he gets in, he un unstraps his armor pieces and they just fall down. Bending over, he picks them up and he hangs them up on these hooks, rusted hooks on the wall. 
and he goes immediately to like this makeshift kitchen. He uh, gets a fire going and starts brewing up this tea with some. F- it smells delicious. Brewing up some some sort of meat, some sort of dinosaur meat. He says I have been here for a year uh, now. Has it been so long? Some of these I brought with me. Uh, most of them I have collected since my arrival. May I ask what brings you to this cursed city? We have found ourselves in the midst of a quest, if you will. Mm, something much greater than us, we found. That's exactly what I was thinking. He nods while stirring the food. He says, I can relate to that. I personally came here in search of something to cure my son of his Ill- illness. I was going to ask, knowing a little of tabaxi culture, I wasn't sure if you had come here to just die a hero's death or if you had a purpose. Oh no, that is that is a fool's errand. Most tabaxi are in such ways, elf, but not this one. I had a purpose. I had a purpose. I have given up on that purpose um, uh, recently when my son had kind of stops he had passed sadly I received word I had I had failed him and so now I am here to live the remainder of my days doing what I know best much like how Copernicus has failed his wife <laughs> I, I feel Ouch. like this is going to be actually, me that was out of character I didn't, that, Dude, I didn't didn't really say that not only that but <laughs> that hits home for Zavril Oh, yeah. Shit. All right. So. I liked how Charlie <laughs> rubbed my shoulders as he said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, yeah, that was like reassuring, <laughs> reassuring James. All right. Sorry. Step up. <clears throat> you want to deal with... Yeah, yeah. That was out of character. <laughs> well, no, because I was actually... All right. Well, gonna I'm going to heal myself in the meantime. Hmm. Quin- uh, Quincy's pretty hurt himself. Um we can I would, if, if it's possible, if we're not in a huge hurry to meet the Red Wizards, what do the rest of you feel about I, resting longer? My larger sc- um, spell slots are spent, as well as all of my other abilities. I still have some lower spell slots, but all my Fawn of Magic, my Sorcery points are spent. My Tides of Chaos is spent. Well, you're one of our hitters, so... And all of my magic is exhausted, Listen, so I would not be able to support. If Irame needs to rest, then I have can all rest. Two second level spells that I can use to heal us up. Yeah, but they won't let me regain spell slots and sorcery points. Oh no, we have to sleep. But <laughs> I'm saying in the meantime, yeah, so we don't sh- expend yeah. uh, hit point dice. I'm at 23 hit points right now. Can you short rest as an elf? I can four hours and I will be fine. So that's all we need. I mm-hmm. only need an hour and I get I would need back. uh I would need a full rest to regain any spells. Yeah. So how many are you down? The humans would need a full ma- rest. I, my magic is completely exhausted. Oh, okay. So then we need a full rest for Quincy. It's not for Irina. Yeah. And I'm down half my hit points. Do we have a, a r- like, I know that we didn't have a, a time limit to reach the Red Wizards, but is there anything that's like, seems ridiculous Urgent. to spend before we meet them, or? They cannot proceed without us, the, nor we them. This is true. I, um, don't mean to halt progress in my distrust of the Red Wizards. I, I plan to move forward forward i let them take wesson and, and i won't object to working with them i just want it to be known that i do not trust them well i mean we can't trust anybody in this world mm. i mean lest behold we trust the red wizards i know you got something to say quincy but only that i am not as naive as so naive that i would blindly trust them Right. However, it does appear that we are on the same side for now. Mm. But they're powerful. And we are not. <laughs> Look, we have the greatest hunter this side of the... <laughs> of the of Faerun. Of the Sosh three seas. This, <laughs> <laughs> this side of the fucking world. 
I don't know. Well, this past month or two has definitely shown potential in myself that I did not think possible. And I have seen many of you grow in, in ways that surprise me still. Yes, but I feel that even meeting that one wizard, the woman, she's powerful. My magic, I don't believe, would hold a candle to hers at this point. Ah, you underestimate yourself. At this time, I do not believe we have reason to think that we have to face her in such a manner. Hmm. I will try to drop my hostile manner towards them upon meeting them. Uh, at this point, Bag of Nails approaches each with a bowl. He says, The food is ready, my friends. You may stay as long as you need. And I thank you for giving this old, this old cat another sh- another chance. Um, the poison. Where did that uh, come from? Yes, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Copernicus more than anything is curious about if uh, it's a powerful poison. Confronting him directly doesn't get an answer. Is there anything I see in his house that? You look around, you definitely see some vials. You get the, especially you, Copernicus, you'd pick up right away that this guy dealt, deals in killing. He, he, you've seen assassins with similar workshops mm, before. Perhaps a better person to waste your monkey paw. And, uh, and at that, you're right. He does say, uh, he does answer you. I mean, honestly, when you hit Zavril with that, it brought a smile to my face. <laughs> <laughs> he says, ah, yes, that poison has been in the family for a long time, and if, if not for it, I would have been dead a long time ago. I may have a few vials if you're, if you're interested. <laughs> if I'll take them. <laughs> if. <laughs> he uh, turns, digging through some junk on the shelf, and... Pulls out a few vials, shakes them a little bit, puts them back, pulls out one. He says, ah, yes, uh, here it is. He says, I have three left. Uh, you are welcome to them. Oh, gladly, my friend. Um, in, in fair trade, these are uh, feathers from the king of Omu, the king of feathers that used to roam this place until the three seas shipping and freight dispatched him to the nether realm. Ooh, shameless plug. He stares at the feathers as he takes them in his fingers. Three vials for three feathers, I think, is a fair trade. (laughs) He says, I think that is more than a fair trade, my friend, and I, I cannot take such a precious trophy. Please, the vials are yours. And you must keep these feathers. I have been unable to confront the beast. Right, right. Your tabaxi nature, or yes, whatever you want to call it. I understand. I I appreciate the... I I will take the uh, poison. I cannot take a trophy that I had not earned. Right. You must understand. So I'm sorry I didn't mean to uh, impose. <laughs> Quincy's impatient to, like, he's just exhausted and needs to, he's tuckered. So he just thanks, thanks the tabaxi for his hospitality and just kind of settles into a corner and closes his eyes. All right. Uh, and when's the last time you guys ate or drank any? Uh, oh, when's I the don't la- even know what eating or drinking was. In the morning. Well, did you, you, Probably, yeah. Or lo- last long rest. Yeah. And even then, it was probably rations or stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is like a meat stew. This will definitely Ooh. this will definitely reset your, uh, you know. Exhaustion. Your ex- exhaustion, <laughs> if you had mm-hmm. any. Or at least, you know, gearing up towards it. Before Irame, um sets to meditate, she's going to approach Copernicus. Um, and she actually carries a dagger that she never <laughs> uses. Um, it just never really comes up to be useful. And she shoves it straight in his heart. <laughs> and she's going to ask to dip it in one of the vials. Yeah, let's see what this does. I mean, why not? To keep on hand. Are you asking Copernicus? I am. Yeah. Let's mm. do it. This dagger otherwise seems quite pointless with my magic, but perhaps with some poison on it. So we'll coat one of Irame's daggers carefully. 
Ooh, the poison. Yeah, you apply so we pour the it gel. In the it's like a jelly like substance. Would it take a whole vial to coat her dagger? Or yeah. can I yeah? yeah. yeah One use. Fair, I think. All right. Oh man, imagine the crossbow bolts with frost, poison, and sneak attack. I actually was oh, tempted to, uh, while you were sleeping, but I am not take one of your bolts. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought, it's and I was the, like, no. It aren't the bolts that actually have the frost. Uh, I know, once again, though, I could just picture Irime and Copernicus being elven nature playing with the poison in the middle mm. of the night. It's like, <laughs> yes, ru- rub it on this blade. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Irime has does. always been very supportive of your darker side, <laughs> as opposed to the rest of the group. <laughs> she has. Like, She's always been accepting us. laughing at your phrasing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not exactly supportive, but just kind of turning a blind eye to it. No, but she likes Sybil openly. So throughout your resting period you also learned from Bag of Nails that he had come in search of an artifact or a, a, a treasure he called it uh, named the Navel of the Moon which he had, ne- which would have saved his son and he had never found it. Oh, sounds sexy. Uh, apparently it had alleged powers you know, that would help uh, help his son. The Navel of the Moon. Right. I just watched The Mummy, so all I can think of is a knocked in the moon. So this navel in the Yeah, moon. so pretty much what happened, you found that his son went missing. And he was searching, he was searching for him. He couldn't find him. He came here looking for the navel of the moon, which would help him find his lost son. But he didn't find it in time. And he received word that his son had been found dead. I hate these stories. I wonder if your compass is magic is something like this navel of the moon. Oh, that is an interesting concept. It does help you find the ones that you love. Mine are linked, though, through two objects. Could be different. Could be. Two enchanted compasses. Much like there's many different poisons in the world. As a matter of fact, my um, father and I used to play hide-and-seek with the compasses. All right, and as you guys are laying down, um, settling in, everyone make me a constitution saving throw. And I'm on 20. What? We all ate the soup he got us. And just just remember. And just remember what you got. So you got a, Copernicus got a 20. Quincy rolled a (laughs) 2. Quincy always nailing those. Con- constitution I don't know if, save. I don't know if I've ever made a constitution <laughs> save. Your mate got an 18. I rolled a 3 again. Um, but as a, yeah, you don't feel anything or anything. Just continue as normal. I and prefer to be called Elf Boy now. <laughs> <laughs> and Drow Boy. Drow Boy. It's what my daughter calls my son. Elf Boy? It's That's hilarious. cute. That's adorable. It's uh, so at this point, the rest, you guys get rested. Did you, you took a full rest or a short rest? We were full. taking a full, full rest. Oh. So fully? Oh, okay. And I want uh, to right. stay up for a little bit before I pass out and talk about hunting stories with this guy. Ooh. Yeah. Bond. And yeah, Hunter's he, and bond. He, and he definitely partakes. Can can we hear some, some of the stories? Uh, we talk about murderous vines. We talk about... <laughs> I, Murderous yeah. Vines is right in uh, Zavril's wheelhouse huh? mm. <laughs> Probably another Constitution save he failed <laughs> <laughs> It was <laughs> I hope that you speak of the uh, Tortoise I w- The great sea dragon There sea tortoise Slash dragon King slash of the king of the sea What was it called Dragon turtle king of the, the sea King of the sea huh? Yep Aboard the Divine Whore. Yeah. What? You remember that? <laughs> Impressive. I didn't remember that. How could you forget? <laughs> I'm just <kidding>. so, <laughs> so divine. <laughs> so divine. Um, I came up with the Divine Whore's backstory in the uh, Ruby campaign. That's right. Yeah. Epic. All right. Uh, yeah. So you guys get rested. You, you fill up. Uh, you bid your farewell. He sees you off now it's about 
a bit. It's got. It's afternoon now. It's probably getting closer to evening, but not. Um, but not quite. Um, it's definitely evening. It was morning. The sun had started to rise during the King of Feathers mm. fight. The morning haze. No. Yeah, it was the morning. Yeah, during the fight, there was the okay. morning haze. Okay. I remember that specifically. Okay. Okay. So let's start fresh. What time is it? What day? Morning haze. King of Feathers. So it still starts Copernicus's birthday? It starts that was the 17th. No, the 18th. The 18th was Copernicus's hammer, birthday? We went into the Shrine so of Wongo the, so on the 18th. So it's 19 Hammer. 19 Hammer. Yeah, ev- oh, getting closer to evening on 19 Hammer. And we're yeah. done with our long rest. Yeah. yeah. It was the morning. Now, you were pretty close to... Quincy, you're looking at the map. Uh, you see it right here up on screen. Where's my cursor? Right there. Now, according to your map, this looming palace up ahead and to the left sits in the center of a giant wall. Uh, from from where you're standing, it's a curved wall. You can assume that it encircles the palace. How high is the wall? That wall is only about 15 feet, so the palace... And even some of the structures loom over it by far. Uh, The shrine, Mark Obalaka Shrine, is just at the end of this thoroughfare and to the left, right up against the wall of the palace. Is that the shrine we had seen the Red Wizards at from a lower vantage point? No, we had seen them on the butte. On the butte right here. Ah, okay. Yep, just to the south. uh, I remember thinking... Glad they got that one, because so I don't want to fucking yeah, go so out let, there. <laughs> I'll update your location on the map of where his abode is. You're right here. So just to the south of you currently is where that butte rising from the lava pit. Um, and that's where you initially saw the Red Wizards, which makes sense that their headquarters is nearby. And this and bag of nails is staying behind. Yeah, yeah. He has no business going and anywhere. Obalaka? Obalaka is the name of the shrine, but they said that their hideout is is across the street from Obalaka Shrine. You'll notice the red cloth, she said. Yep. And bag of nails. He wishes you luck on your quest, (laughs) and he sees you off. (laughs) Well, I hope uh, you'll treat any new passerbys with the same greeting you treated us. He chuckles. If they prove themselves. He chuckles and grins, and you see one of his pointed teeth is broken off. He says, if I remember, my friend, and he kind of tuck- pats his forehead a bit. He says, with luck, I will be gone soon. I hope I can treat others th- this way uh, going forward. I come in and out often. I'm sure the rest of us appreciate your hospitality a lot. Quincy will uh, reach for his hand and simply say, uh, it pleases me that it did not come to an uglier end. It was a pleasure meeting you. And I, you, uh, again, good luck on your quest, my friends. May you succeed where I had failed. Uh, Irma's just going to nod as she leaves. She's finding it very difficult to... um internalize or empathize with his story given that her father is dying and what's happening she's um she's almost too moved by it to uh give it too much thought and you are on your way down the thoroughfare down the thoroughfare you make it to the end of it unhindered you notice as you turn to the left you notice up ahead up up to the left the road splits now this road leading up like if there were road signs this would be like palace boulevard right it leads right up to the palace gates and this is where the red wizards are dwelling uh that's yeah yeah looking around it was in the vicinity and it's in the vicinity it's not at the actual shrine but uh yeah standing before obalaka's shrine uh you're actually just to the south of it uh, it's and that's located at the base of the palace wall. You do spot the red cloth easy enough, blowing gently in the afternoon breeze. 
Um, it's not quite evening yet, but the sun is definitely uh, past its peak and it's moving into the evening. Uh, a careful glance does reveal a dimly lit entrance, half shrouded by a rubble that appears to belong to the crumbled neighboring house. Um, and that is just below that tattered red cloth, clinging for its life in the breeze <laughs> against one of these houses. Upon seeing the uh, red tattered cloth, Irame is going to be reminded of the cloth she had found in her satchel. Mm-hmm. And she's going to reach for it just to kind of fiddle with it in her hands. Is it felt? It, it is, is now. Zero <laughs> <laughs> cracked a smirk there. I saw it. I did. <laughs> If anything, this cloth reminds Copernicus the one that Simwa B left on the river. Yes. But that is neither here nor there. Now, we're on our way to Ovalaka, but when were we supposed to meet back up with Orvex and these red wizards? I'm not sure that we are entering Ovalaka, or if we were just using that as a landmark to right. find the red wizards. Ovalaka is where we're going to find the red wizards across the way at where that red tattered cloth is you noticed a portal you know a dark entryway a dimly lit entryway beneath that red cloth okay uh it looks like we have found the den or the lair the lair <laughs> of the red wizards the red wizards what do you say <laughs> quincy shall we embark inside let's walk inside Climbing through the portal is uncomfortable, but <laughs> you manage to scrape through. Say uh, portal, I picture like yeah. Stargate. Swirling. Yeah, like we're going <laughs> to sw- end up purple. back at the heart of Ooptow is it's what I purple. think of. Uh, no, I'm using it as defined. Um, we like roll out at our headquarters and Daniel Dev talk, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I just got some new fans. <laughs> you guys you are going to love You them. guys just got paid. <laughs> um, it opens up into a room that's surprisingly dark considering the condition of most of the surrounding buildings uh, those with dark vision can see as if it were dim light and those without cannot see at all or they can put Get on a mask, mask on too. <laughs> mm, I hate that mask creepy I don't like the fucking plague mask so then masks. I do believe that Quincy is the only person now that cannot see in the dark yeah. Is Zavril played by Jim Carrey? <laughs> oh. That would be awesome. That would be a big It grab. would be like weirdly entertaining and dark. My nose is a little bit bigger than that. I still mm. haven't seen uh, Kick-Ass 2. And I kind of want to see his character in that. What the fuck are you I talking about? I never saw Kick-Ass 1. Kick-Ass is awesome. It's a good movie. Is it the one with the little girl? Superhero. Superhero Nick Cage. chick and yep. Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I've seen that. There's a second one? Yep. With Jim Carrey? With Jim Carrey. With, oh, what? my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, uh, is Nicolas Cage in that one, too? No, he died in the first one. Oh, he, I don't remember it. I personally oh, love Oh, spoiler Jim alert. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I just don't, don't recall it. I've seen it. I, I'm just a big fan of Jim Carrey. I'm a Jim Carrey I know some people don't like Do you guys like... Watch the trailer for Kick-Ass 2. I like, His character uh, looks... Amazing. Yeah. Looks Have funny. you? I like. Uh, I like Jim Carrey's. Like I liked uh, Internal Sunshine. Eternal Sunshine. Spotless Mind. Yep. I thought that was great, and I <laughs> also liked <laughs> Spotless Did Mind. You were <laughs> hammered. You yeah. Are you what? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. You yeah. said. <laughs> you <laughs> said <good>. wine. <laughs> 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 Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. See, I grew up with like Ace Ventura 1 and that's 2. That's hilarious. Oh, I'm Truman funnier Show, than I thought. Truman, Truman, Truman Show. Show. Yeah, that's Truman great. Show. I like his in the Cable Guy. Cable Guy. Yeah. Fucking Jack Black was in that. Like I old like school the Jack twisted, Black. Uh, Even Man, right, how man long are we gonna, How long are we going to talk about Jim Carrey? Though? Until right John, now, gets, until out John gets out of the bathroom. Oh, and I got, <laughs> I got one have too. The number 23. I was just going to say that before they told me how drunk I was. Dude, even with my intro I was probably going to say episode. the number 32. <laughs> can't <laughs> see the number 32. I said, let me show you something. <laughs> Where'd that come from? That came from Fire Marshal Bill, yep. Jim Carrey. Fire Marshal Bill, Jim Carrey. Well, Jim's not going to carry this episode. Oh. So. <laughs> 
While you were in the bathroom, I said eternal sunshine of the spotless wine. <laughs> I think oh. you said internal sunshine <laughs> of the spotless wine. Oh, it's so much better. <laughs> oh. Internal. <laughs> internal sunshine of the spotless wine. It doesn't uh, stain anything. You can get it all over your carpet. So, Zavril, you put the mask on, uh, the mask of the dark alchemist, and you got, you, looking at Zavril put this mask on gives him a whole different vibe. The eyes are kind of, you know, they're protruding enough. They're not just flat covered, but they are kind of domed a little oh, bit. Oh, it's grosser than and I the thought. Eyes, the eyes have countless holes in them as like an insect. And the mouth, while not bulbous like the eyes, it is flat with countless holes. And the nose is like an elongated beak. It's not all too different than the old plague doctors that used to stuff uh, <laughs> spices and stuff in the nose uh, during plague time because they thought that it was the smell of the plague that were that was uh, infectious. Is there a way for Quincy to see in the dark? <laughs> um, Irame will do her best to guide Quincy if there is not a way. If someone has a torch that I can I do have off. a torch. I will light it and hand it to Quincy. All right. Quincy blushes and thanks, Irame. Thank you, Irame. Seems I am underprepared for dark places. The you torch came all this way without a torch. <laughs> <laughs> I might have lost it in the Sashin Star when the uh, alligators attacked. Fair enough. Uh, now that the room is lit, the torch sparks up, illuminating the area. The room itself is rather boring with uh, the lack of notable detail, but you do spot on the far wall a stairway set in the floor that leads to a lower level. Down we go. There appears to be no other way. But saying those words, Quincy will glance around the room to see if there's a secret door. Ooh, the old Ooh, secret nice. door. Now, I uh, never think to check for such things. I rolled a 13 on perception. Uh, you don't notice a secret door at all. All that's of interest in this room is the stairway that leads down into the basement. Is it a secret stairway? <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually looks like a cellar uh, entrance, very modest. But we can act like you saw it first. <laughs> you know, man, Quincy, with your academic youth, always so joyful. I'll be looking for traps as we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Irame will, because of Quincy's uh, lack of perception in the dark. She will uh, make sure he's not at the back of the crowd. Mm. After exploring the dark tunnel, because that's where it leads into, Quincy, you recognize this tunnel appears. Usually in situations like this, these tunnels often link one house to another as escape routes, um, usually pretty rich folk. We're within the palace walls. Yeah, you're in kind of the upper end of the city now. So the ruins themselves are even a little bit more elegant than the ones you've come across, or at least at one point were. I was just going to say that Irame might understand this because of her royal, like her sure. royal status yep. and understand, you know, be comfortable even in them. Yep. And Quincy will just prattle a little bit, saying that it it is not uncommon for... Uh, pl places within this close to palaces and within the city walls to have secret passages linking from building to building. It is quite fascinating that this ancient city, the people that had built these places had the same mentality. In fact, I think this place was built by humans around that he just got, continues on with some details. Yep, and as you're moving along doing that, you abruptly stop because you hear something. You hear voices coming from down the hall. Uh, you do see a door up ahead, and you can hear familiar voices beyond the other side of the door, and it does sound like Zagmara, Thasma, and Orvex. And now, getting closer, you hear that they are discussing the legends of the nine gods. Perhaps we should take this opportunity to stop and listen before uh, yes. they know that we're here. And you do so, and you hear, as you're moving closer, the words come into focus. Zagmira, 
I hope you're right, Orvex, for all of our sake. It was the will of the gods we've made it this far, and I fear going forward, many of us will not make it. We must prepare for that and push forward regardless. Should the soulmonger remain hidden, is a fate far worse than death for the entire world. And you hear Orvex. Yeah, well, of course, it must take priority to end this death curse. I am so glad we are on the same page. Uh, does Valindra feel the same? See, Orvex is on the up and up. Mm. Just as I said. Shh, listen. <laughs> we will see. You hear, shh, someone's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Do we really? <laughs> the door creaks open, and you see the one known as Thazra. It is your friends. They have arrived. The door swings open widely. To, you now see Orvex and Zagmira standing over a table. We apologize for our late arrival, but we did have to take advantage of Sanctuary. I, I understand. I hope you are well. You appear all in one piece. Please, quick, come in. Were you followed at all? Not that we're aware of, no. Are the Yuanti crawling about the city? We are closer than ever to their lair. I, which is why. <laughs> well, well, we did see... Have we, what evidence have we seen of them so far since we've been in the city? We've seen them at the at the when we first entered, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You got jumped by a patrol. I got beat down by one. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the snake men, I'll let them know. Zavril here, our very own, was captured by them. They don't happen to have a magic that will track him after that, do they? Would you know? Is squinting at Copernicus. Well, I'm just saying, if they're wondering if we were being watched by the snake men, then he was with them for so long. Boy, he was quick to sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel a lot of right animosity <laughs> between us. I was like, uh, what are you saying? Uh, Zagmira turns to Zavril and she says, You must tell me of your stay with the Yuanti, Hunter. It'd be wise for everyone, I think. Do you, perhaps, being as powerful as you are, red wizards, to detect any kind of spell on our friend here? Well, it could take some time. By then, we could all be dead. But it must be done, nevertheless. And from this room, let me describe this room. This room looks to be like a makeshift war room. There's a table, and on the table, there's a map of Omu in its current state and there's little pins in the map marking each shrine and there's X's on the ones that they know that you've hit there's X's on the ones that they've hit you could only assume how many X's total? nine so there's an X on all nine shrines there's a circle just north of the palace and beyond that, she, she says, For now, I understand you had just rested, but we are, are in no position to move forward with the plan. I think we should do as Orvex said and share stories. All right. You see Thazra. She leaves through another door on the far side of the room, only to shortly after return with a book and a pouch of spell components. And she approaches you, Zavril. She says, please, come with me. You must trust me. I will follow her. I'll, I'll give a All look right. to Arame as I'm walking away. <laughs> and uh, Zagmira sees them leaving, and she says, hopefully, if they had been spying on your friend, we will discover it, and perhaps we could even maybe mislead them, at least for a time. Yes, Copernicus squints his eyes. This Zavril's led away, shooting daggers at Zavril. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I won the Talk bet. To. So you guys get <laughs> comfortable. Other things. As you guys get comfortable, you've got some time. Uh, Zavril is is going through a ritual with Azra. 
Um, I'm kind of picturing a, a chill scene where you guys, maybe there might be some discomfort, but at the same time, it's an, it's an enclosed area and there's stories to be told. So we have four of the cubes. We pres- uh, presume they have the other five. All the shrines appear to have been targeted already based on the map that you have displayed here. I mean, that's what is most important, right? Do we have all the puzzle between us? Do we have all the puzzle cubes in our possession? I'm glad you asked that. And by now, I'm assuming uh, introductions have been made and she knows your names, unless you don't want to tell her your name. Speak up now. No, we could. Uh, Quincy doesn't care. She says, I'm glad you asked, Quincy. That saves me the trouble of asking how much you know of these cubes. The truth is, the first cube that we discovered was taken in a brutal massacre that you must have seen coming in. That cube was taken from us that sad evening. She lowers her eyes. So, that being said, we have four of the cubes in our possession. We are assuming that you have the other four, and Rosna C and his Yuan-Ti have the last and final cube. Zavril's get a shudder from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Cappy's just thinking back to the wild dogs feasting on the bodies of red wizards. And he's not sorry for them because he doesn't really know them. But just the thought of the wild dogs eating human bodies makes him smile for a second. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. Pernicus is in a downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Even Sybil shuddered at that. Um, she, she goes on to reveal some of the information she has. She's like, you've been traveling with one of ours, so you must know of the obelisk to the north of Omu. Yes, Orvix has been of great assistance to us. Mm, we do. I... Must admit, though, I am a little bit curious about the rift in the Red Wizards that exists. Oh, I was not aware anybody knew about that. But yes, there was some amongst our ranks who believed uh, uh, Valindra was not to be trusted. However, whatever the case, whether she could be trusted or not, they are fools to go against her. Have they partnered themselves with the Yuanti? I feared they had but I have not seen them in quite some time. Would you know them by sight? Absolutely, I know all under my charge. So much like the snake men themselves, they have hidden. Now may I ask how you came upon this information? That is something that I know we have kept dear, and I'm not even sure Orvex knew of such things. Was it in a scroll or a note? Uh, so the, we discovered uh, this information? Belly of the jelly. So what shrine was that? Or the gelatinous cube? That is where we discovered it? Well, we found a note where they were creating... There was a, a shift, a divisive shift between the two, right? That's right. That's absolutely... Is that Wongo's shrine? Or? No, Wongo's was the um, masks. Right. Um, it, before it then... Was, um, so Wongo was the monkey. So Kubazan was the giant frog, the frog hemoth, right? In between frog hemoth and monkey, the labyrinth. Yeah, Ejin's yeah. shrine. Ejin's. Yeah, yes. with the puzzle floor. Yep, yes. that was it. Yeah, uh, so you came, so you happened upon uh, the corpse of one, is what you're saying. Um, Essentially, yes. not his corpse, but within the remains of a gelatinous cube, we found a sack satchel that held a scroll and a note that suggested there was a A rift. rift. She begins to chuckle a bit and she says, yes, it does make sense now. I believe I do know of the one you speak of, the fool. He was poking around asking for recipes to create and control slimes. So I'm to assume he's gone now. It would appear he Along was eaten by his, his own creation. <laughs> Irame is going to express... <laughs> Wrong with his recipe. <laughs> Irame is going to express that she despises gelatinous cubes. Quincy's attention is distracted, and he's drawn by the circle on the map. 
and he just kind of puts his finger to it. And he says, I, I do not know what this circle is. I see the shrines are marked, but what does this indicate? That, Quincy, would be, as we understand, the main entrance to the Fane. Is this where the obelisk stands? No, my dear Irame, this is where Rosna C dwells. You hear a shudder again from the other room? <laughs> <laughs> what is the Fane? We call it the Fane of the Night Serpent, the children of Dendar plot below the palace they had making their home there so that is where from whence they spring it is indeed and it is also where we believe Rosnasi keeps the ninth the ninth and final puzzle cube that we as a group I'm hoping must retrieve in order to gain access to the obelisk have you located the obelisk we have indeed and we believe the obelisk is the entrance to the tomb of the nine gods. Quincy feels the hair stand up in the back of his neck. So let's get this all out in the open then. What is the Red Wizard's final objective then? With this death curse and the nine gods and all this muckety muck. And I have to ask, does it align with Valindra's? Our goal is Valindra's goal. She wishes to locate and discover the soul manga. And destroy. She would prefer to have it in hand. Though, if that is not possible, we will destroy it. And if she were to have it in hand, would she still lift the curse? It is. She kind of looks down, cracks a smile, and she says... It is to her benefit that the death curse is lifted. Yes, you'd have to be quite out of your mind to not want it lifted. As much as I admire Valindra in the short amount of time we met her, I do not know her at all, though. Or what her final goals. Upon hearing this, um, Irime's going to think that for whatever reason that Valindra wants this lifted... She can't help but think it's to further her own power, but at the same time is furthering the power of this necromancer worth saving the life of her father. So she reaches in and she grabs her compass, thinking of her dad. While you're pondering this, Quincy, Orvex approaches you quietly while this is happening, while this conversation is going on. Uh, a thick, dusty book under his arm. Uh, Quincy, could you spare a moment for a fellow academic, perhaps? Of course, Master Orvex. Uh, yes, wonderful. For Forgive me if this seems a bit intrusive, uh, but during our travels I couldn't help but notice you studying a certain map. Ah, uh, yes, a gift given to me by my former tutor. Well, uh, as it seems strange, it would uh, seem that, well, oh, well, here, here, actually, allow me to get your insight on something I found. And he presents the book from under his arm, and he opens it, and the pages appear brittle, and the familiar scent of ancient flax paper brings you back to your time spent with Master Triss. Uh, Orvex proceeds to fan through the pages gingerly so as not to damage anything, and he stops at an image of a massive city that resembles a younger, thriving Omu. Uh, A name that you can't recognize is scribbled in the corner, and words go on to describe the royal palace, but before you got too far, Orvex turns the page, and then... Your skin shrinks, causing the hair on the back of your neck to stand. And the next image, though odd at first, because it was drawn at a time before ruin. But you can see, this series of buildings exactly resembles the ruined structures drawn on the map that Master Triss had given you. Dun, dun, dun. But where did, where did you get this? Now... You know that Orvex had already seen your reaction, and a short smile appears on his face. He says, Quincy, I... 
I can take you to this place if you would like. It is not all too far from here. I must confess, what began as a curiosity has become a shadow, a shadow looming over me. I feel compelled to find this place. My map was given to me by my former tutor. His name was Master Triss. He is an elven man, perhaps with ties to the to the Feywild. My curiosity is piqued. I'm sure we can sneak away for a bit. Just, if, if anything, just to take a peek and look around. I can show you where it is, but I would like to accompany you uh, during it, if, if I may. But if you wish to do it alone, I do not mind. Um, but, yes, if you'll have me, I would love to uh, see this to the end, at least. I would not shirk my duties to the three seas, shipping and freight, lightly, but... Again, this has been gnawing at me. I would, I would appreciate your company. It is not something I feel I should, I should do alone, but, I, but it is something I feel I must do. He smiles and he puts his hand on your shoulder. He says, thank you, Quincy. I, as an archaeologist, you understand. And for that, I am grateful. No, no, I... I am so, so grateful for this, Master Orvex. I am, I am looking forward to this. And Quincy unpacks the map and opens it up and compares it to the pages in the book. And he, he's looking at both side by side. You guys notice Quincy and Orvex looking at old pictures and writings. And as this is going on, the stories continue. Zavril... The ritual ends, and you appear clean. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> As did I, Zavril. The want he only poisoned your mind and not your body as well. Oh, uh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time on the Natty 19 Podcast. Oh. My scars, man. Start. Yeah, we started like well, an hour later. Good. Something. I I feel good about it. I feel like I'm gonna end up just like fucking bag of nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I kept thinking of. All right, okay. Well, I'm gonna stop the recording now. Save it so we don't lose the power. <laughs> <laughs>